subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you never miss any video lesson from Rao's IES Study Circle. Join the official Telegram channel of Rao's IES Study Circle to stay updated and get all the materials on the Telegram. The link to the channel can be found in the description box. Hello and welcome to Daily News Simplified, an answer to what, why and how of newspaper reading from the UPSC Civil Services Examination Perspective. And today let us take up the new Delhi edition of the Hindu newspaper dated 6th June 2022. And these are the list of the news which we will be taking up for today's discussion and their timestamp has been provided in the YouTube description. So on this note let's start our today's discussion from UPSC prelims and mains point of view. Now before starting our today's discussion there is an announcement for you. Rao's IES study circle has released answer keys for the prelims examination conducted yesterday. So answer keys has been released for set A, set B, set C and set D. A link to these answer keys has been provided in the YouTube description. So you can go through the answer keys and find out your score. The first news to be taken up appears as a lead article on page number 6. This news says the IPEF that is Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity holds promise but there are perils for India too. So this news mentions that United States has been carefully constructing the framework for IPEF which is based on the Trans-Pacific Partnership and in this regard the news says that India despite endorsing it needs to be wary of certain hurdles. So this news highlights about various hurdles which can come in the way of India as it has decided to join Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity. So this, so this grouping is basically based on four pillars which are fair and resilient trade, supply chain resiliency, clean energy decarbonization and tax and anti-corruption measures. So the IPEF has been proposed by President Biden of United States of America and India has agreed to become among the first 13 members of the grouping. Now these members include Australia, Brunei, Indonesia, Japan, South Korea, Malaysia, New Zealand, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand and Vietnam. Now by looking at the grouping itself we can understand that this grouping which has been carefully constructed by United States has been done to form a mega economic alliance against China. Now based on the issue of flooding of Indian market by cheap Chinese products, India withdrew itself from RCEP. So on this note, India sees a good opportunity to become a part of this mega economic alliances which has been proposed by United States. However, there are certain hurdles which can pose a significant challenge for government of India. Now I have stated that the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity is based on the earlier framework proposed by President Obama, namely the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And this partnership was also constructed to promote American business. So it highlights that the agreement levels the playing field for American workers and American businesses, supporting more made in America exports and higher paying American jobs. So the whole idea with respect to Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity is also to promote American business and at the same time also to include other like-minded countries as a part of this economic deal. So with respect to TPP, it highlighted that by eliminating these various taxes, it makes sure that the farmers, ranchers, manufacturers and small businessmen of America can compete and win in some of the fastest growing markets in the world. And it also highlights that more than 95% of the world's consumers lives outside America. Now since the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework is based on Trans-Pacific Partnership, hence it has been decided not to make this economic alliances as a free trade agreement. So please remember that the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework is not a free trade agreement. So the question is that what United States aim to achieve through IPEF? So here the United States of America has been successful in bringing together these countries together who ideologically stands against China. So this in a way also gives these countries an advantage to become a part of a mega economic alliances where there is no Chinese dominance and which is dominated by United States and like-minded countries including India. Now after understanding about the reasons for IPEF, there are certain problems or there are certain issues which India can encounter as has been highlighted in this particular article. 
So regarding the first pillar, which is fair and resilient trade, the article says that US aims to develop high standard work centered commitments covering these various issues. These issues are labor rights, environment and climate related issues, issues of digital economy, agriculture, transparency and good regulatory practices, competition policy and trade facilitation. So it is here where the author says that in some of these aspects, such as labor rights, environment and climate change, digital economy particularly, and also agriculture and transparency and good regulatory practices, government of India may face certain problems. Now this article highlights a very crucial part. Here the author says that so far, intellectual property rights or IPR issues have been excluded from IPEF. However, if IPR is also included as a part of Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity Agreement, which according to the author will become a part later, then it will also pose significant challenge for India. Now regarding the intellectual property rights, India and United States do not see eye to eye. And the United States trade representatives in 2022 has placed India under the priority watch list along with Russia, China and four other countries. Now why India has been placed under the priority watch list of United States? Because according to United States, it believes that Indian IPR laws does not provide adequate protection and this has resulted in substantial loss for American companies as there are not adequate protection with respect to filing of patents for software copyright issues for Hollywood movies, pharmaceutical products and various patent disputes with respect to pharmaceutical products, narrow patentability criteria according to United States and the issue of trade secret protection in India also. Along with this, the United States believe that India's data protection bill, which is currently under the purview of JPC, that is Joint Parliamentary Committee and the data localization laws of India are barriers to trade and threaten innovation and economic growth. Now, data localization laws refers to such policy measure which restricts flow of data outside the country. So it says that policy measure which restricts data flow by limiting physical storage and processing of data. And this aspect so far, telecom data pertaining to subscribers and payments data are supposed to be stored in India. However, payments data can be processed abroad. But again, the problem remains with respect to data localization laws. So data protection bill, which provides for data localization laws, according to United States, might act as a barrier to trade and threaten innovation and economic growth. Now, another important objective of IPEF is ensuring regulatory coherence among member states. However, regulatory coherence with number of issues, including IPR, that is intellectual property rights, environment and climate change issues, labor rights. There is no regulatory coherence as it differs between developed and developing countries. So here also government of India may face certain problem regarding one of the objective of IPEF, which is to ensure regulatory coherence among member states that is having almost a common regulatory requirements with respect to certain aspects, including the things highlighted in the four pillars, including fair and resilient trade, supply chain resiliency, clean energy decarbonization and tax and anti-corruption measures. And based on this, IPF highlights that it can make market access contingent upon meeting these regulatory standards. So this may also act as a barrier for India. Now, despite these concerns, the question arises as to what made India participate in this mega economic deal. So it was an opportunity for India to be a part of this deal after backing from RCEP and also the fact that RCEP was mainly dominated by China. So this was an economic grouping which is basically outside the influence of China and India also aims to benefit from global supply chains as the combined GDP of these country accounts for roughly 40% of the world. So India aims to benefit from the global supply chains of these countries participating in IPEF. Further, with the help of these countries, India also aims to join the global anti-money laundering efforts and it is also an opportunity for India to counter China through economic grouping along with US and their allies. So these can be said to be some of the reasons as to why India has participated in Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity. 
Thus, this topic becomes important basically from the perspective of GS Paper 2 under international relations, specifically with respect to bilateral, regional and global groupings and agreements involving India or affecting India's interest. Now, based on our discussion, this becomes your practice question for mains. The question says, critically analyze government of India's decision to join Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity. And this question carries 10 marks. Now, the next news to be discussed appears on page number 7 in data point and it mentions about counterfeiting and getting away with it, that is counterfeit currency. So, this news highlights about a data from NCRB and RBI which mentions about various counterfeiting activities. So, it says that in financial year 2022, the number of counterfeit 500 notes doubled to 80,000 from previous years and this is an increase of almost 101%. Whereas the denomination of rupees 2000 has also seen increased fake currencies. So it highlights that there was a significant increase in fake rupees 2000 notes as well along with rupees 500 notes. And from 2016 to 2020 period, West Bengal recorded the most number of cases related to counterfeit notes and this was followed by Uttar Pradesh and Assam. Now it's also interesting to note that even RBI, that is Reserve Bank of India, found almost 6.9% of notes as counterfeit notes, whereas other notes which were counterfeited were found by other scheduled commercial banks of India, which is close to 93.1%. And this is as per the data of RBI and also NCRB, that is National Crime Records Bureau. Now, despite the increase in counterfeit bank notes of Rs. 500 and 2000, there has been a decline in the use of counterfeit notes for the denomination of rupees 50 and 100 as you can see in these graphs. And in order to find out the fake currency, the NCRB has come up with fake Indian currency notes information system. So the NCRB, that is National Crime Records Bureau, has created a national level database and deployed web-enabled software for online recording and reporting of fake Indian currency notes. Now, having or possessing counterfeit notes is a punishable offense under the Indian Penal Code. Now, the term counterfeit has also been described under the Indian Penal Code. So, it says a person is said to counterfeit who causes one thing to resemble like another. So, if a fake 200 currency note is made to resemble a real 200 currency note, then it can be said to be a case of counterfeiting. So it says that a person is said to counterfeit who causes one thing to resemble another thing intending by all means of that resemblance to practice deception or knowing it to be likely that deception will thereby practice. So one of the basic ingredient of counterfeiting is deception which means making people believe about something which is not true. So section 489A, 489B, 489C 489D and also 489E provides for different types of punishments with respect to possessing or transferring or having counterfeit currency notes. So section 489A says that whoever counterfeits or knowingly performs any part of the process of counterfeiting, any currency note or bank note shall be punished with imprisonment for life or an imprisonment which may extend to 10 years along with fine. It further mentions about using as genuine forged or counterfeit currency notes or banks. Here it says that whoever sells to or buys or receives from any other person or otherwise traffics in or uses as genuine any forged or counterfeit currency note. So whoever sells or buys or traffics such counterfeit currency notes shall be punished with imprisonment for life or a term which may extend to 10 years along with fine. Similarly, possession of forced counterfeit currency notes can also lead to imprisonment up to 7 years along with fine. Now, the data points highlights about state-wise allocation of registration of cases on counterfeiting and also conviction rate and also about police pendency rate and charge sheet rate. So, here it says that the map shows number of cases registered for counterfeiting between 2016 to 2020 and the maximum cases has been registered in West Bengal, followed by Uttar Pradesh and Assam. Now talking about pendency rate and charge sheet rate, let us first of all understand about pendency rate. So 
सपोज हंड्रेड केसेज वेर अप फॉर इन्वेस्टिगेशन एट द स्टार्ट ऑफ द ईयर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन एंड बाई द एंड ऑफ द ईयर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन ओनली फोर्टी टू केसेज वेर पेंडिंग फॉर इन्वेस्टिगेशन सो इट हाईलाइट दैट पुलिस पेंडेंसी रेट रेफर्स टू केसेज पेंडिंग इन्वेस्टिगेशन एट द एंड ऑफ द ईयर एज अ परसेंटेज ऑफ केसेज दैट आर अप फॉर इन्वेस्टिगेशन एट द स्टार्ट ऑफ द ईयर सो हियर इन दिस केस द पुलिस पेंडेंसी रेट कैन बी सेट टू बी फोर्टी टू परसेंट वेर एज द चार्ज शीटिंग रेट रेफर्स टू केसेज चार्ज शीटेड एज अ परसेंटेज ऑफ केसेज रिपोर्टेड इन द ईयर नाउ चार्ज शीटिंग बेसिकली मीन्स दैट एन इन्वेस्टिगेशन रिपोर्ट हैज बीन फाइल्ड और सबमिटेड बाई द पुलिस आफ्टर एन एफ आई आर वॉज फाइल्ड सो हियर इट हाईलाइट्स अबाउट चार्ज शीटिंग रेट वेर इट सीज सपोज हंड्रेड केसेज वेर रिपोर्टेड एट द स्टार्ट ऑफ द ईयर एंड एट द एंड ऑफ द ईयर आउट ऑफ दोज हंड्रेड केसेज ओनली ऑन थर्टी फाइव केसेज चार्ज शीट दैट इज एन इन्वेस्टिगेशन रिपोर्ट वॉज फाइल्ड सो इन दिस केस वी कैन से दैट द चार्ज शीटिंग रेट इज थर्टी फाइव परसेंट सो इफ यू कंपेयर इट विद दिस चार्ट हियर इट हाईलाइट्स अबाउट द पुलिस पेंडेंसी रेट विच इज एज हाई एज सेवेंटी सिक्स परसेंट एंड चार्ज शीटिंग रेट इज क्लोज टू फिफ्टी परसेंट एंड द पेंडेंसी रेट हैज इंक्रीज फ्रॉम द ईयर टू And the same goes for charge sheeting rate also, which has also increased from 2018 to 2020 by almost 50 percent. Now, further, this data point also mentions about poor conviction rate. So it says that conviction rate refers to cases ending in conviction as a percentage of cases for which trial was completed in a year. So suppose in a year, cases for which trial is complete is 100. So there are 100 cases for which trial is complete. and out of this 100 cases for which trial is complete only 65 cases resulted in conviction so we can say that the conviction rate is 65% now it also highlights about court pendency rate which refers to cases pending trial at the end of the year as a percentage of cases that were up for trial at the start of the year so suppose at the start of the year the cases which were up for trial were 100 and at the end of the year cases which are still pending trial at the end of the year is 98 so it means that the court pendency rate is very high at 98% and this is what has been highlighted here which means that there are increasing number of cases for which trial is still incomplete and the conviction rate highlighted here is 32.5% for the year 2020 so it means that cases ending in conviction is 32.5% for the year 2020 so these are some of the highlights with respect to the data point regarding counterfeiting now counterfeiting has also been described as a terrorist act under the UAPA that is unlawful activities prevention act so it says that whoever does any act with the intent to threaten or likely to threaten the unity integrity security economic security or sovereignty of india or with the intent to strike terror or likely to strike terror in the people or any section of the people in india or in any foreign country by various means and one of the means is to damage the monetary stability of india by way of production or smuggling or circulation of high quality counterfeit indian paper currency coin or any of other material so such an activity will also be considered as a terrorist act as per the uapa and the uapa also provides punishment for terrorist act it says that whoever commits a terrorist act shall if such act has resulted in death of any person be punishable with death or imprisonment for life and shall also be liable to fine in any other case be punishable with imprisonment for a term which shall not be less than 5 years but which may extend to imprisonment for life and shall also be liable to fine thus smuggling of counterfeit notes within the territory of india has also been described as a terrorist act under uapa now since we are talking about counterfeit currency notes hence you should also know about indian currencies or the new indian currencies and the various motifs which has been used at the back of the indian currency and on that basis let's take up this practice question for prelims the question says which of the following motifs have been printed on various denominations of indian currencies so there are seven options first rupees 10 ajanta and elora caves second rupees 20 konark temple third rupees 50 rani ki wav fourth rupees 100 hampi and chariot fifth rupees 200 mangalyan 
सिक्सथ रुपीज़ फाइव हंड्रेड सांची स्टूपा एंड सेवन रुपीज़ टू थाउजेंड रेड फोर्ट सो हियर यू नीड टू सेलेक्ट द करेक्ट आंसर यूजिंग द कोर्स गिवन बिलो अब बिफोर आंसरिंग दिस क्वेश्चन लेट्स गो थ्रू दोज इम्पॉर्टेंट हिस्टोरिकल मोटिव विच हैव बीन प्रिंटेड ऑन वेरियस डिनोमिनेशन ऑफ इंडियन करेंसीज सो ऑन द टेन रुपीज नोट सन टेम्पल कोनार्क हैज बीन प्रिंटेड ऑन द रिवर्स डिपिक्टिंग इंडियाज कल्चरल हेरिटेज एंड द बेस कलर ऑफ द नोट इज चॉकलेट ब्राउन द मोटिव ऑन रुपीज ट्वेंटी प्रिंटेड एट द बैक ऑफ द नोट इज एलोरा केव्स डिपिक्टिंग कंट्रीज कल्चरल हेरिटेज एंड द कलर ऑफ द नोट इज ग्रीनिश येलो रुपीज फिफ्टी डिपिक्स हम्पी विथ चैरियट वेर एज रुपी हंड्रेड डिपिक्स रानी की वाव इन गुजरात और रुपीज टू हंड्रेड डिपिक्स मोटिव ऑफ सांची स्टूपा रुपीज फाइव हंड्रेड डिपिक द रेड फोर्ट एंड रुपीज टू थाउजेंड नोट हैज द मोटिव ऑफ मंगल यान डिपिक्टिंग इंडियाज फर्स्ट वेंचर इन इंटर प्लानिट्री स्पेस सो हियर द ऑप्शन वेर पेयर्स टू थ्री एंड फोर पेयर्स वन ओनली पेयर्स फाइव सिक्स एंड सेवन ओनली एंड नन ऑफ द अब पेयर्स आर करेक्टली मैस्ड सो आई होप आफ्टर गोइंग थ्रू दिस डिस्कशन यू विल बी एबल टू अटेम दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रैक्टिस क्वेश्चन फॉर प्रिलिम्स नाउ दिस टॉपिक बिकम्स इंपॉर्टेंट बोथ फ्रॉम द परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ पॉलिटी एंड इकोनॉमी फ्रॉम योर फिल्म परस्पेक्टिव With this, let's take up the next news for discussion. The next news to be taken up appears on page number eight in the text and context section. The news mentions about the status of eVTOL, which refers to electric vertical takeoff and landing. So these aircrafts will not need any runway and will take off and land vertically with the help of these propellers. Now, as of now, these technologies are being developed. and accordingly the government of india is exploring the possibility of inviting these manufacturers of electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft to set up their base in india also according to the make in india project so these evitol aircraft uses electric power to take off and land vertically and this technology is still being developed on account of success in electric propulsion system based on various progresses made in motor battery fuel cell and electronic controller technologies so apart from using electric propulsion system these aircrafts will also use fuel cells and batteries now government of india is looking forward to these e vitol aircrafts based on increasing vehicular traffic in india based on connecting remote areas and also the fact that they are cleaner technologies as compared to vehicles so the overall benefits with respect to e vitol aircrafts can be said to be that they provide clean alternative urban air mobility they will help to tackle increasing vehicular traffic especially in the urban centers such aircrafts using clean technology will provide better maneuverability and also efficiency and it will also help to tackle air pollution and also the fact that it will connect remote areas which are not well connected by air services as these air services uses runways so these e vitol aircrafts will not need any runway rather they'll be needing sky ports to take off and land and with the development of science and technology these aircrafts will also use artificial intelligence as some of these aircrafts may be manned or piloted and some of these may be unmanned that is without any pilots now talking about the e vitol aircrafts there are various challenges which both the aviation sector along with respective governments needs to overcome so some of the concerns highlighted with respect to use of e vitol aircrafts are noise concerns as number of e vitol aircrafts will fly in times to come or in near future battery limitations or limitations with respect to technology on the use of batteries another set of challenges would be air traffic management once these e vitol aircraft are regular in use further there will also be a need for collision detection system when number of such aircraft starts flying in cities now apart from these operational challenges there are still certain challenges with respect to design and technical issues regarding the functioning of these aircrafts another set of challenges could be damage caused due to accidents or engine failures there would be certain infrastructural challenges as governments across the world will have to build sky ports within cities for vertical take off and landing and also charging ports for such aircrafts now to develop such an infrastructure there is a need for collaboration among urban planners architects engineers 
and various department of the government including the private sector now another set of challenge would be prevention from cyber attack and also maneuverability of unmanned aircrafts further their operation in bad weather will also act as a operational challenge another set of issue would be certification and licensing of such aircrafts and lastly the financial cost of travel that is if someone uses these aircrafts on a regular basis so all these can be said to be some of the challenges with respect to use of e vitol that is electric vertical takeoff and landing aircrafts thus this topic of e vitol aircrafts becomes important both from the prelims and mains perspective and gets covered under gs paper 3 with respect to science and technology the next news to be taken up appears on page number 1 and it mentions about world's first fishing cat census done in chilika and this fishing cat census was done by chilika development authority in collaboration with fishing cat project and for this particular census camera traps were also deployed now these fishing cats are mostly found along the wetlands in asia including india sri lanka java pakistan etc and destruction of wetlands are posing a threat or as a challenge for the survival of fishing cats so on this note let's go through some of the important highlights from our prelims perspective about fishing cats so according to iucn status they have been categorized as vulnerable however recently their categorization has changed from endangered to vulnerable now regarding distribution in india these fishing cats are mainly found in the mangrove forest of sundarbans on the foothills of the himalayas along ganga and brahmaputra river valleys and in the western ghats now regarding global distribution the fishing cats are found along the wetlands in major south and southeast asian river basins starting from indus in pakistan mekong in vietnam and also they are found in sri lanka and java now regarding their protection status according to cites that is convention on international trade in endangered species they have been categorized under appendix 2 whereas under the indian wildlife protection act they have been categorized under schedule 1 which means that hunting of fishing cat is legally prohibited now these fishing cats are categorized under appendix 2 of cites so here we must understand what these different appendices of cites means now if a species has been categorized under appendix 2 of cites then it means that such species are not necessarily now threatened with extinction but may become extinct unless their trade is closely controlled so there is a need for regulation on their illegal trade further appendix 2 also includes look alike species that is species whose specimens in trade look alike other species for conservation reasons an international trade in specimens of appendix 2 species may be authorized by the granting of an export permit or re-export permit now regarding appendix 1 of sites it lists species that are most endangered among sites listed animals and plants and they are threatened with extinction and sites prohibits international trade in specimens of these species except when the purpose of import is not commercial and it is scientific research or any other non commercial purpose then such species are included at the request of a party that already regulates trade in species and that needs cooperation of other countries to prevent unsustainable or illegal exploitation of such species and international trade in specimens of species listed in appendix 3 is allowed only on presentation of appropriate permits or certificates by respective governments so these are the categorization of protection accorded under appendices of sites now talking about threats these fishing cats love water and are well known for their expert hunting skills in aquatic habitats so loss of such aquatic habitats including wetlands and mangroves are a major threat for their survival further these animals are also killed by people under the wrong assumption of being a small tiger or a juvenile tiger now another reason for that threat includes habitat loss and fragmentation conflict with humans over poultry and livestock as well as demand for bush meat and trade for captive wildlife are also causing fishing cat populations to decline so these are some of the important highlights from your prelims perspective about fish cats which you must remember and this topic on fish cat gets covered under the section of environment 
Now, based on our discussion, this becomes your practice question for the day. It says Indo-Pacific economic framework for prosperity focuses on which of the following four pillars? Options are first, fair and resilient trade; second, supply chain resiliency; third, clean energy decarbonization; and fourth, encouraging use of cryptocurrency. The question is select the correct answer using the code given below. Options are A, one, two, and four only; B, two, three, and four only; C, one, two, and three only; and D. One, two, three, and four. Now, coming to the answer of yesterday, the question was: Consider the following statements. First, barcodes are easy to copy or counterfeit, whereas RFID is more complicated to replicate or counterfeit. Yes, this is correct. Second, in contrast to barcode scanners, RFID scanners can process dozens of tags in a single second. Yes, this is also correct. Third, unlike RFID tags, which must be in line of sight, barcodes need not be. Now the statement is incorrect. So here the question was which of the statements given above is are correct. So here the correct answer becomes A. That is one and two only. So with this we come to an end to today's discussion. Thank you for watching DNS.